Hi, I'm Thomas Larock, and I want to thank the CTO Advisor for having me here today along with Karen Lopez. Hi, I'm Karen Lopez. I'm a data evangelist at Info Advisors. I go by Data Chick on Twitter. And um, I also want to thank Keith for having us on. Yeah, and I am a head geek at SolarWinds, and uh, we're both here at VMworld. Yeah. And uh, so it was two days ago, they made this announcement about uh, RDS becoming available for your you know, in-house, on-premises, in your own data center, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they were bringing the idea of a managed service and putting it in your own data center. So uh, we wanted to, we, we have a few thoughts about this. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, I see it as an indication of, so first of all, what, what's really happening is it's a partnership between VMware and AWS where you can, an RDS being uh, the, their, plat, their database as a service platform, Mm -hmm. being made available inside your own data center today, which allows for easier migration, say, if you want to get to the cloud. But what it really does is it takes away the administration overhead that every company faces when it comes to managing databases. So now you get the, the brilliance of a database as a service, but locally to right. where you are. And so this is a huge, huge announcement. Right? I'm assuming, right. So I think it's huge. I mean, other vendors have had other sort of cloud-like stuff that you can run on-prem on an appliance. But I think the difference here is that even then that's not remotely managed. It's not really database as a service as much as it is sort of a, an appliance for in-the-box infrastructure as a service or platform as a service, right? So that's what's interesting here. I'm assuming with this announcement as well is what they're getting not just manages services as this database as a service, but also um, you know, fewer on-site resources they have to do it because of the remote administration. And I guess the big question is going to be for me is where does that where is that line drawn? Like, do you um, you know do you add users and groups, or does it come with predefined and you can add more? And like that's where it, you know it's always in the details of where the managed services line cuts off. So and, and there's I, I also see the say the the future. I can see the future, but. It's it, it's the first shoe dropping of something that's much bigger. Yeah. The idea that I can spin up a, a VM and have RDS deployed and have AWS managing all of that stuff for me, all the administration for it, my recovery, everything I need, including the security aspects, which mm -hmm. I think yeah. we're going to talk about. But yeah. if they can do that for RDS, they can do it for anything. anything. It's the orchestration of the cloud coming to earth, mm -hmm. and that is huge. That's the big thing. It's not about me, what database do I want to use? It's the fact that the the beauty of the cloud orchestration that we've been seeing, the reason people go to the cloud is for those ty that type of yeah. orchestration coming back to earth. That is the huge, huge part. Right. And then, then it becomes, now I see whatever this hardware that it's running on in your data center is really, like it's physical hardware, but it's nearly virtualized as well because it's been architected Probably, I'm assuming, for all the other cloud reasons, for elasticity, burstability, um, the ability, you know, it's probably services driven, not just integration driven. I mean, those are all the things that I think, you know, we talk a lot about hybrid crowd, cloud. This is a different type of hybrid cloud. Instead of your stuff kind of bursting into the cloud, this is a cloud bursting into your data center. Yes, hybrid, hybrid going both the other way. ways. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I, I know you and I had discussions of security yeah. about this as well because Really, your first question is, well, who's managing the security? Is it still Amazon? The yeah. answer is yes. It's yeah. still uh, Amazon that is going to, you know, have the the role based security. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they they man basically it's it's RDS with it, which is uh, essentially SQL Server with Amazon defaults. Yeah. But Amazon is still handling it. Like your, your backups are going into their cloud. They're still yeah. handling that aspect of it. Yeah. They, and RDS has always been, you know. Uh, giving you the tools to manage the security yourself. So none of that really changes. So yes, there's still some overhead for you that you have to do. Mm -hmm. You only want the right people to access your data. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the physical, physical security of that, that's Amazon for mm -hmm. the stuff that goes into the cloud. Right. right. So one of the interesting things, so drawing an analogy, is that in the utility business, there's an important thing between you and the utility, like electrical or anything. It's called a demarcation point. Mm -hmm. And the demarcation point is the utility is responsible for all the hardware and any software and any uh, energy that comes up here. And then once it hits, say, your home, your 
premises, right. <laughs> once they hit your home, then you're responsible for everything, right? right? So now that we have the cloud coming here to our data center, our premises, like now is Amazon responsible for all that? Whereas in the past, when you were going to the cloud, like it's almost like because the cloud has come to you, now someone else is managing like the longer distance to their right. networks and everything. Like th this is what I think is an, an interesting analogy because as the energy business changed over the years, so did the definition of that demarcation point and how it's defined because now it's mostly software defined as well. Yeah. So it's the, it's kind of a, a you know we're getting to the point where data center is becoming a utility, right? Yeah. So not just commodity hardware, but utility services for databases. And uh, the other aspect going on here, again, a, a bigger picture part is the fact is, um, you know, Amazon and Azure have a goal, which they have two goals really. <laughs> the first goal is get as much data as they can into their cloud because they yeah. are they're essentially infrastructure providers for yeah. the entire world at this point. Yeah. So Amazon and Azure both recognize we have to find ways to make it easier for people to migrate their stuff to the cloud, yeah. and whatever cloud that would be. Yeah. It's good for there to be two companies and not just one, mm -hmm. you know, battling it out so to speak. But now VMware has partnered with AWS in order to make that easy. Mm -hmm. Could it not be possible for VMware to partner with Microsoft of course. for something similar? Yeah. So then you see a scenario where it's not just VMware and AWS, but it's VMware, AWS, and Microsoft all coming together. And the three of them, I think in a short period of time, I've seen VMware go from a period of where I wasn't sure how much relevance they were going to be having. Yeah. And today I'm sitting here going, not only are they relevant, but I think they're poised to take over the world along with Azure and AWS. <laughs> and of course, the story that makes me happy is it's the data-driven part of all of this, right? That there's a focus on data, not just hardware, not just infrastructure. That once they're starting to think about databases as a service, the more and more the world starts thinking about that, the more there's a focus on data. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any last thoughts? Well, so the security part yes. that I think is really important. So a lot of the obstacles that people give to not going to the cloud is, oh, my data is sensitive, I can't trust it with third parties, even though their typical data center contract still their data is in a data center that is a third party, right. right? So the cloud, you know, this having database as a managed service says that I think there's going to be more responsibility for in-house developers, architects, DBAs, to make sure that data is properly encrypted and has the security measures put on it as much as possible. Yeah, so if you have been using, say, RDS um, uh, as a service in Amazon, like you talked about the demarcation line, yeah. if, if that now that VM is sitting in your own data center, yeah, yeah you are going to have to take on some of those responsibilities, like yeah. physical access to your data center. Yeah, all still, of that. You still have all those things as well. Mm -hmm. But yes, the, uh, the encryption part, it's... That doesn't really change because that still exists today. Yeah, even the no matter where it is. No matter where it is, you're still going to have that aspect. The only thing you might say, uh, so data in transit. Yeah. You know, Amazon usually takes care of that, but if mm -hmm. there's no data in transit or if it's yeah. really just your own internal network and stuff, now mm -hmm. that's going to yeah. be on you. Yeah, yeah so um, we have a session that we're doing we coming do. up. That's right. That's right. About. Yeah. Protecting data yeah, so and how it's the, changed. Uh, so the Tho Solar Winds THWAC Camp, which happens in October. Yeah. So online can, event. Online event. You can go register at thwaccamp.com. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about the Seven Samurai for SQL Server Data Protection. Yeah. Uh, which and, will have uh, some hints about uh, things to do for data at rest, data in use, data in motion. Right. And the modern changes to databases that allow you to protect data even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any other last thoughts? That's it. I mean, I want people to love their data. So this data announcement made me really happy. Yes. And thank you again to Keith, CTO Advisor, for having us here today. Thank you.